Hello, and welcome to today's live video. Today, we're going to be talking about hemorrhoids. So this is a fun one. Well, not so fun. If you've ever had them yourself, like me, and you find yourself on the toilet, constipated, blood in the toilet bowl, not the most fun time. So I've, I've been there. I've, I've been there myself personally. I know how scary it is to see a toilet bowl red, full of blood. I had really bad hemorrhoids myself. I don't have them anymore. So I always like to say this at the beginning of my videos of when I'm talking about a health problem that I have had and have firsthand experience knowing that this is a completely solvable problem. So I'm telling you, this is a solvable problem. I've already done it. I've seen other people do it too. So can you. And today I'm going to show you how you can do it as well. So the clue is in the title of today's video. Hemorrhoids are actually more a liver problem than anything else. And I'm going to help you understand why. So we've got a little demonstration today. So if you'll take your attention away from my face and look look down here, you'll see a, a diagram that I stole from the internet of the digestive system. And what's most important here is this little portal hepatic vein here. So let me little, get my little artistic skills out and uh, show you. So it's the portal hepatic vein. So in essence, what's happening in hemorrhoids is the blood is pooling at the bottom of the digestive system and it's causing the blood vessels right at the bottom near the anus. So that's the area that you've got down here. I'm going to use red because that's a, that's a nice color for this. This area here. And what's happening is the blood is pooling in this area and it forces the blood vessels to, to bulge, to swell, and they can protrude out the end of the rectum. So if you've got internal or external hemorrhoids, it's basically blood pooling right, right in your rectum, right at the end of your digestive system. And the reason this happens is you have a, you have a backlog. It's like, so imagine, so this, this portal hepatic vein here, you can see it connects to your whole digestive system. So anything that comes from your gut goes through your liver before it reaches your like primary circulatory system. So anything that you put in your mouth has to go through your liver before it enters your body. So any drugs you take, any toxins you're exposed to, anything that goes in your mouth or anything that is created in your digestive system goes through your liver before it goes anywhere else. And this is what is really key. This is, this is the key to understanding hemorrhoids and, and solving them. The liver is congested. The liver cannot keep up with the amount of work that it has to do. So be this like detoxification. I mean, your, your liver does almost, it, it, it's involved in almost every single process in your whole body. So if you look at hormones, if you look at sleep, if you look at digestion, if you look at literally anything, anything that happens in your body, the liver has an impact in it somewhere at some point. So we need to reduce the workload of your liver because what's happening is all of this blood that's coming from your digestive system is trying to travel up through these, these veins into this uh, hepatic portal vein to come into the liver. But the liver cannot handle the blood that is flowing into it. So it kind of causes a traffic jam. And as this blood begins to back up, it pulls lower and lower and lower in the digestive system. So this traffic jam, it's, the blood is congested all the way here and then it gets stuck and it's, and it's pooling down here. And it's causing hemorrhoids to flow because the liver cannot take that blood. It doesn't have any space. It doesn't have any capacity to filter that blood, to filter what's coming from the digestive system. So it's pulling, it's getting stuck, it's staying in the digestive system and it's pulling right at the bottom. That's what, that's what happens with, with liquids. You know, they pull at the bottom. So right at the bottom of your digestive system, your rectum, your anus, and that's where the blood's getting stuck. So we need to figure out, first of all, why? Why is your, why is your liver struggling? And we need to support it. And by doing so, we reduce, we reduce your liver's overwhelm. Your liver can handle more. It filters the blood quicker. It doesn't pull. Problem solved. So maybe, maybe I'm making it sound a bit simple, but it is quite a simple problem to solve. So there's a couple of housekeeping ideas that I want to share with you because these are really good things to do, first of all, before we look more into liver health, just to just to rule them out. Like these are good things for everybody to do, whether you have hemorrhoids or not, but they're especially important to cover if you do have hemorrhoids. So we would, first of all, we want to reduce rectal pressure. So we already have a backlog. We already have extra pressure because the blood can't move to the liver properly. So anything we can do to help reduce pressure in that area 
is going to be very helpful. So first of all, we can use a squatty potty. You don't have to use like squatty potty as a brand. You know, you don't have to use the you don't have to use the branded version. You need a stool. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to elevate where your feet are to put your body into a, a more of a natural position that it would be in when you're trying to have a bowel movement. So think about how you would go. Imagine if you went to the toilet, but you didn't have a toilet, you know, you'd have to squat outside on the floor. That kind of posture, that kind of position that your body is put in, that's what you're trying to mimic when you're sitting on a toilet. So using a squatty, to a squatty potty or some kind of stool can be really helpful to bring you more into that posture. The reason this is really important is, I'll just scroll up here. This end part of your digestive system, this is called your sigmoid colon. This, and it's called the sigmoid colon because it's kind of shaped like a bit, a bit like an S, this little, this little shape here. And when you're, if you're not sitting properly, if you're not squatting properly when you try to go to the toilet, this doesn't have the right shape and your bowel movements can't move out of the rectum properly. So using a squatty potty puts the colon into the right position so that your bowel movements are able to pass correctly, which is really helpful. So if you have hemorrhoids and you haven't tried this, I mean, if you go to the toilet, use a squatty potty, full stop. Use a stool, use something, put yourself in that position. But if you have hemorrhoids, especially important. Second, don't push or strain. And I know this is frustrating if you have constipation, I'm going to cover that in just a second. But pushing and straining is, is literally what you're doing is you're getting all of that blood that is already accumulating and over, overwhelming your portal pack vein system and you're, oh, you're pushing it down. So you're literally forcing these blood vessels out of your rectum. So don't do that because it's going to make it worse. A little trick, like a kind of little hack that I learned is you can cough. If you cough, you're going to actually trigger the pushing movement of these muscles, but they're also going to stay relaxed and they don't create this kind of strain. So you can sit on the front and kind of cough from the bottom of your belly. And if you're gonna get the bowel movement out by pushing, you're gonna get it out by coughing. If coughing doesn't get it out, it isn't coming out. So don't push on top of it. Cough, it's way better for you. It's not gonna force your hemorrhoids out so hard. It's gentler. It keeps you in a, in a relaxed state as well. When you're straining, you're pushing, but that also causes contraction, which closes the, the sphincter, the anus, the muscle. So you're, you're pushing to push the poo out, but you're also squeezing your, your butthole closed. So it, it can't come out. When you cough, it triggers relaxation of that muscle and it also pushes at the same time. So cough is way better than, than, than pushing. And don't spend excess time on the toilet. As I said, the big problem here is you're pooling blood. If you're sitting for a long time, you're actually encouraging your body to pool blood in that area. So also don't do that. 12 minutes on the toilet is a max. Obviously everyone's, there's exceptions, but generally like don't sit on there like, writing a novel or doing like spending an hour on the toilet you know 12 minutes pretty much if you haven't done it in 12 minutes it's probably five more minutes probably isn't going to make much difference but it's going to make hemorrhoids worse so do that do those things one final thing that i actually forgot to put on here but i'm going to i'm going to add as a, a little note don't use toilet paper toilet paper is, is is awful it's awful for your for your butt it's got chemicals in it it's dry like just don't use it. A way better way to go about this is to, to actually clean your rectum using water. You can use a bidet if you have one. If you don't, fill up a two liter bottle of water, squirt it behind you, clean, clean your butt with your hand, wash your hands well afterwards. Your hemorrhoids will thank you. Your butt will be a million times cleaner. It won't be itchy. It will, it's a game changer, you know? I, dry it with toilet paper, you know, finish up, clean yourself off. You don't, you don't have a wet butt, that's not, that's not good. But make sure you clean your butt properly and you don't wanna be like wiping it, wiping it, wiping it, wiping it with, a bra with abrasive paper that's full of chemicals, you know, not great. Clean it with water, dab it dry, sorted. If you have a B-Day, use it. Cool. So that's, that's housekeeping out of the way. Everybody should pretty much do these things, but especially if you have hemorrhoids. Second, improve your gut health. If you're constipated, I already have a video that covers this. It looks like this, okay? I got the little thumbnail, it's here. Go on YouTube, type constipation solved, two-step formula. William Dickinson, you'll find it. I'm gonna leave a thing, so it's probably popped up somewhere if you're watching this on YouTube already. So click the thing if you're constipated, you'll solve it. You know, constipation, you can solve it. I was constipated, I'm not. I've helped loads of people not be constipated anymore. You don't have to say constipated, it's a fixable problem. So fix it. Takeaways from the video, if you don't, if you're not gonna click off, you don't wanna watch it probiotics, fiber. It isn't what you think. So go and watch the video. <laughs> you really need to watch the video. I can't, I can't cover it now. It's not, it's not on topic enough. If you have constipation, just go and watch the video and electrolyte, electrolyte balance and minerals. Super important. I don't want, as I said, don't want to talk about it today. 
if you're constipated, go fix it. I have a video that tells you how to do that already. As you can see, it's 50 minutes long. It's a full in-depth guide. You'll fix your constipation. Go watch the video. Finally, now we need to actually look at what this video is actually about. Improve your liver health. So first of all, reduce toxic exposure. Your liver is basically where most of your detoxification takes place. So the, the best thing you can do to support your body with detoxification is just not be exposed to the toxin in the first place. So whatever you can do to reduce your toxic exposure is going to help massively. Most people, well, maybe, maybe not most, a lot of people, the biggest source of toxicity is their gut and their damaged gut flora. So if you're, as I said, everything that comes from your digestive system has to go through your liver before it can go into your circulatory system, before it goes into your cells, before you can use its energy, before it goes anywhere. And if you have a gut dysbiosis that is constantly producing poisons and toxins because you aren't digesting your food properly, they're eating it, they're breaking it down, they're producing toxins, and then you're absorbing it, that's going straight to your liver and it's destroying your liver. So whether this is like alcohol, pharmaceutical drugs, whether it's damaged gut flora from food not digesting properly, whatever it is, figure out where your source of toxicity is and remove it. That is the most important thing. If you do that, most of the other stuff doesn't matter, you know, because all these other things are supporting detoxification. If you're not exposed to the toxin in the first place, you don't need to worry about it. So do that. Secondly, coffee enema. Coffee enemas are amazing for this. First of all, because they're actually helping the liver to detoxify, but for a, an even more important reason, especially when we're looking at hemorrhoids, coffee enemas are really amazing. So as, as I'm sure you remember, because I just, just said it a second ago, the big problem that we have is the blood is backing up. It isn't able to reach the liver. It's not able to get past the liver. The liver is blocking it. And it's usually because the liver is toxic. So first of all, the coffee enema, I know you're doing an enema and you feel like the big effects that it's having on your body are in your colon. It's not, it's actually affecting your liver way more. I also have a video about that. Just go on YouTube, William Dickinson, coffee enema, loads of videos, how to do it, why it works. Don't want to cover it today. Go check the video out. They're really cool. Why it's important in this case though, is it's taking toxicity off the liver. So it's reducing the amount of workload. So more is going to be able to flow to the liver, but also more importantly, when you administer the coffee as an enema, the caffeine and the other molecules in the coffee are going through this portal hepatic vein. So they're going through this system that is a traffic that has a traffic jam to get to the liver. As these molecules, especially the caffeine travels through this system, it acts as a vasodilator, which means these, these blood vessels here, this, this big vein, it gets bigger, it gets wider, which means the traffic jam isn't a traffic jam anymore. So all the blood that was getting stuck can now flow freely to the liver. You don't have a traffic jam anymore. So I've literally had experiences where I've had hemorrhoids that have been like, they've like, so bit graphic, so sorry, but I'm, I'm going to say it because it needs to be said. I've had hemorrhoids that are literally like bulging out of my ass and I could put my finger on them and I could like feel my heart beating. I could feel my pulse in, 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 my, in my rectum, in, in my asshole. <laughs> so I could feel my heart beating in my ass because it was so backed up. I did a coffee enema. The hemorrhoids literally like went back into my butt. Like they disappeared after one enema. So if you have like an active bleed, don't, don't do an enema. Let, let, your, let your anus heal a little bit because you don't want to like, you don't, you don't want to mess yourself up. And when you're doing an enema, be very careful if you have hemorrhoids because it's a delicate area. You don't want to like poke and prod it in the wrong way. So be gentle, be very careful. But doing this, if you have hemorrhoids, can give you in, immense symptom relief very rapidly. And I'm talking like 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes can really, really help. You know, it's super, super effective because it's dilating those, those blood vessels, letting the blood flow, flow straight to the liver again. Amazing. Absolutely. That's why it's basically top of the list. It's awesome. Liver gallbladder flush. A bit aggressive. I think these are kind of harsh. I would, I would, I'm not going to advise anybody to do one unless you've talked with somebody else about it first. So talk to your practitioner, doctor, something, because I find they're a bit harsh. They can be a bit aggressive. Um, I did one once, way too harsh for me where I was at my point in my healing process. I still think they're too harsh for me now, and I'm way more healed than I was then. They can be quite aggressive, but they can be really helpful, especially if you're a little older. So if you've accumulated a lot of toxicity, if you know you have liver and gallstones, liver gallbladder flush can be really cool. I don't have a video on that, but do a YouTube, do a Google, I'm sure you'll find something. Castor oil packs. Super safe. I don't know of anybody that has ever hurt themselves doing one, but saying that, I'll, prob I'll probably find somebody that did. So if you have hurt yourself with a castor oil pack, let me know. I'd be really interested to hear how you managed to do that. But as far as 
everything here goes. I'd say these are one probably the safest option. It's completely external. You're not like shoving anything up your ass or you're not doing like a flush or anything. So it's super, super easy to do. It's messy as hell, but it's it's quite safe, I would say, overall. Again, you can, I don't have any videos on this, but go and Google castor oil pack, how to do it. Super easy is basically just get organic castor bean oil, slather it all over a, a flannel or a piece of cloth, stick it over your liver, hot water bottle on top, cling film around the outside, towel on top, hot water bottle. Super easy. Leave it on for like 40 minutes. Take it off. Done. Do a series of them. Can be really helpful for... So the reason this really helps is it helps to break down any fibrosis or any... Can help with stones. Helps to break down any damaged liver cells and encourages regeneration of cells. A lot of people use this, like in, in India, they do it, they use it in the hair because it helps you to grow really nice, uh, strong, vibrant hair because it helps cells to regenerate and regrow. And doing it in your scalp can help your your skin, your hair producing cells to, to be healthy. Same thing happens in your liver. Your liver is actually one of the organs that can basically completely regenerate. Even if you're down to like 5% function, if you give it what it needs, give it the space, give it the time, you can completely recover your liver. So you're, you're savable. You can, you can fix it. If it, if it, unless you're like on the transplant list, you can fix your liver. And finally, emotional work. I had to put this on here because it's so important. If you look at it through a lens of holistic 2.0, your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts are connected to your physical body and your physiology. If you're holding and harboring rage, anger, resent, so rage and anger are more the dominant emotion, resentment, passive aggression, stuff like that is more gallbladder, but again, all connected to this, to this part of the body. If you have work to do there, work on it. You know, life is holistic. Everything, health is holistic. It's, if you do all of this stuff, but the actual root cause is that you're holding onto a load of rage and a load of anger, it's not going to do anything. So if that's not where your problem is, don't do it. Work smart, not hard. You know, figure out where the root of the problem is. Work there. If it's emotional, work there. That's what's important. So takeaways. Hemorrhoids are actually a liver problem. They're caused by congestion in the liver, causing a backlog of blood, not being able to flow through the portal hepatic vein system to the liver. First of all, house cleaning, reduce rectal pressure, use a squatty potty or some kind of stool. Don't push and strain, use the cough technique instead. Don't spend more than 12 minutes. No writing novels. Um, don't, don't sit on the, on the toilet too long, you know, 12 minutes. Improve your gut health. Go watch the video. If you're constipated, there's a solution. I literally have a solution right here. Go watch it. You have no excuse. Try the things. It's, it, it works, okay? You can find it. It's really easy. Again, Google. Uh, go on YouTube. Constipation solved. William Dickinson. It will come up. First one. And finally, improve liver health. So reduce your toxic exposure. The single best thing you can do to help and support your liver. Secondly, coffee enemas. I also have a guide on that. Google or YouTube. Coffee enema William Dickinson. You'll find it super easy. Liver call blood flush. Bit harsh, bit aggressive. Talk with a practitioner. Work with somebody if you're thinking about doing this. They're a bit, a bit high level, I would say. Or if you're complete Rambo, at least do your own research before you decide that this is something you want to do. Do a bit of research on it. I know that there'll be some people that comment saying, I did a liver gall blood flush and it was the easiest thing ever. Well, great for you. Like if it works, good. I find them really harsh. And I think that I've talked with a lot of people that find them harsh too. So uh warning proceed with your proceed at your own risk castor oil packs i think these are pretty safe again probably someone going to comment and say i need a castor oil pack and it fucked me up okay S sorry about that <laughs> sorry it sorry it messed you up let me know how you did it but generally i think castor oil packs pretty safe and finally emotional work rage anger resentment passive aggression all emotions connected to this system interestingly the rectum and the anus and the area that's can that is associated with this is all about letting go you know because you think that's where you let go of your bowel movement blood can be really connected to family as well so maybe you need to let go of some of your family i don't know don't know why i said that it was intuitive if that struck a chord for you that message was for you so there you go that's everything for me today if you have any questions as, as always leave them as a comment um let me know if you want me to cover any topics let me know what you thought of the video I, let me know what you like, if you like this format, you know, I feel a bit childish doing it on paint sometimes, but I feel like it's a really good way to do it. So you know, give me feedback. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you, quit, if you have any questions. That is everything for me today. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.